Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. Hey, everybody, Scott, Anita. Good morning. And uh, Mr. Michael himself. Uh, Rosanna is not, I didn't hear you. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Good morning Revolution. Revolution. Come on, guys, there's got to be some, you know, pep in your step. <laughs> Early in this Friday morning and the week is over and it's been one hell of a week. Rosanna's not with us this week, but she'll be back. Uh, and uh, okay, first thing, mask off. I want to know, Dr. Fauci and the Center for Disease Control or whatever that thing is called, says you don't have to wear your mask anymore. Michael, are you wearing a mask when you go outside? Uh, yes. I have allergies really bad. And I, I made the mistake of sneezing the other day. I had my mask on, but I sneezed on the sidewalk and everyone just ran over to the side. So it shows you that people <laughs> want you to wear a mask. They want you to still yes. be careful. You can never get be away, too careful. Get away, get away, get away. What about well, you, and, and if anything shows us that we have to continue to be careful, it's that the um, Argentinian president, um, he got COVID after getting the vaccine. And, and mm. I think he got the Russian, he got the uh, Sputnik vaccine. Mm. And Sputnik put out an announcement and said, we want to remind everyone that nothing's 100%, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, I mean, how are you going to get uh, COVID if you're vaccinated, Scott, and you're oh, that's, uh, that's the, walking outside? I mean, that's the whole the whole point is that vaccines depend on their for their effect on like on huge numbers of people being vaccinated. Um, I don't think there's any vaccine that's 100% effective against anything, um, but uh, they, they can slow the transmission, block the transmission enough, um, hopefully to help people, you know, get to the point of eliminating a disease like, like measles, for example. Um, my, my wife, who, who's a physician, had a, an interesting point about this mask thing. She said, you know, this advice to, to unmask if you're vaccinated is based on the idea that, you know, a very individual approach to health, like the individual is safe if they've been vaccinated, therefore they can take their mask off. But from a public health perspective, um, that like where you take into account the impact of something on, on society as a whole, there aren't enough people vaccinated. There aren't enough people wearing masks already uh, to slow things down. So. Um, Wait a minute. Well, then why is the CDC and the Dr. Fauci saying it's okay? So the uh, the New York Times also published a you know did a, a poll of a bunch of I don't know several hundred uh, academic and clinical epidemiologists, um, and eighty eight percent of them uh, said no way, no no, uh, we shouldn't be um, unmasking for at least a year. Um, and Even if you're outside, so you're saying that uh, Dr. Fauci and the CDC is bowing to public pressure, Anita? I don't think they're bowing to public pressure. I think they're just reporting the science. But I, for one, will continue to wear a mask because I don't want people to think I'm a Republican, which is uh, <laughs> like around right. here. But it's also really good. I mean, we haven't had the flu. People have not had the flu this past year. There's just a lot of things that masking really helps um, helps alleviate. And and it's it's not a bad thing. And uh, I, when I walk outside and and there's no one around me, I don't wear a mask. But you know, when mm -hmm. I'm in a, a a place where I'm with people, I do, and I continue. I will in the future. Plus, Michael, it's a fashion statement. Everybody, they got. You know, they got matching masks, blue if you're wearing a blue suit, red if you're wearing red, yellow if you're wearing yellow, you know, you can be Trey Chic out there. And political in messages. City. Huh? You can have political messaging like political uh, messaging on your mask. I have a fuck Chinese. Trump mask. <laughs> you have a I, have, Trump I have our Trump. party symbol on one and I've seen uh, Black Lives Matter and um I went to a rally with SEIU the other day in support of fast food workers and they had uh, it had a hamburger on it, and it said "serving up um, workers' rights" or something like that. It was creative. <laughs> I don't know if there are any documented cases of if you're outside in the air, well ventilated. I mean, it does, that doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, Anita, um, you are living in the Buckeye State, and they have a lottery. You get a million dollars right. if you. 
It's, you, is that a good idea? Governor Mike DeWine's latest uh, idea is to have this lottery um, system for uh, Ohioans as an incentive to um, um, get people vaccinated. And I think the vaccination rate was slowing down um, and he's doing what he can do. Um, it's, it's spending uh, tax dollars. And of course, uh, the Republicans who are so anti-DeWine right now, even though he is of their party, um, jumped on it right away. Pretty much everybody is uh, is condemning it as a, a waste of taxpayer money. But we'll see. I mean, what 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 we want to do is, of course, get the vaccination rate really way high so that we do have that freedom to. Um, and I, I use the word freedom. I shouldn't have because that's a Jim Jordan word. But um, it just we, we it would be nice to not wear a mask if we didn't want have to. But yeah. Scott, in, in, uh, I'm sorry, Anita, we, 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 you finish your thought. No, I'm done. Scott, in, in New Jersey, they're offering beer. You get a vaccine, you get a free beer. Yeah, I went, I went out and had a glass of wine when I got vaccinated. Um, I, it wasn't free, but uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think it's a good thing. Incentivize people to get the vaccine. But honestly, the fact that it's not... I, the way it would be done in Cuba, or you know, this again from my wife, uh, is that they would line people, they would go to schools, and as people leave the classroom, they'd have people there with syringes and vials, and everybody would get vaccinated as they left the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a uh, public health is not a question of of individual choice. It, it's a I don't know. It, it's it strikes me as one of the failings of capitalism that we you know can't even get people to you know, wear a piece of paper over their face or get a vaccine to, you know, to make I everybody mean, safe. Maybe they should give out a cigar in Cuba. If, <laughs> if that would be the reason. Well, they don't well, need well, to give out How about a joint, Michael, in New York City? You can oh. hold three ounces of marijuana now is legal. Don't bogart that joint. Give everybody a joint of Colombian marijuana. You know, I, I bet you a whole lot of people would get vaccinated then. What do you think? I was thinking more along the lines of uh, tempting people with like uh, the bars and the nightclubs and saying they're not going to open up. You can't go in unless you're vaccinated, unless you go in with your vaccine card. Mm -hmm. I think that would be much more effective. Vaccine only venues. That would be a good yeah. thing. Yeah. And Joe, I remember, I'm old enough to remember the um, uh, polio vaccination and we just, no, there was no question asked. You just went down and you got your sugar cube and everyone was delighted to not have to worry about polio anymore. And there didn't seem to be any politicization of it, although I was young, so I don't know whether I was paying attention, but everybody just willingly went down and protected themselves. Well, there's, the there's, there's, there's a lot of concerns about vaccines, both on the left and the right. You know, Kennedy's son, right? Robert Kennedy, he's a big anti-vax person, and I don't know. Um, I'm for the vaccinations. I got mine quick, fast, and then I hurry. And I encourage everybody to do so. Uh, but one of the consequences of the pandemic, of course, was growing unemployment. The rate is still, it went up. It went up last week, uh, Anita, to 6.1%. And, uh, the, but the governors in, let's see, Arkansas, and where else? Uh, Arkansas oh, wow. and two other states have cut off the three hundred dollar extension. Exactly. Uh, Arizona, so don't Georgia, want to work. Huh? And didn't... They're talking Arizona about doing Georgia. that in Ohio as well, Joe. Uh, it's it's just uh, I don't know what's going. I mean, a lot of people are going to start losing their homes. I think it's going to just increase. Uh, child poverty and and hunger in food insecurity. It's it's a very bad uh, thing. And considering the unemployment rate still is high, it's just criminal to take those benefits away so prematurely. They're going to expire anyway in September. So you know, it seems just cruel. Montana and South Carolina, Scott, cutting them off. Yeah, it, it's a disincentive to work. Well, I think we have to look at what the real uh, disincentives to work are, which are, um, you know, horrifying working conditions, poverty wages, the fact that for, you know, a, a lot of the working class, especially 
um, especially single uh, mothers. Um, you, going back to work when schools are not fully reopened means finding childcare um, and that costs money and that's difficult to do. So there's a whole lot of other stuff that would help people go back to work um, rather than, you know, trying to, you know, there, there's no, there's no carrot for the working class. It's all, it's all just stick, right? Just beat them until they, um, and that, that's the Republican vision. Um, cheap labor, cheap labor, cheap labor. It used to be the party of free labor in the 18, um, 50s and 60s when, you know, when the big question was slavery, but it became the party of cheap labor, labor and, and really now, we talked about it last week a little bit, you know, almost getting to where we can use the term wage slavery. Um, they got that reserve army of the unemployed, Michael. You know, keep wages low and, uh, and uh, the, uh, but it doesn't seem like the, uh, there's really a job shortage because wages aren't going up. So, I, you know, it's Michael, it's, uh, it's just a device to force people back to work as Scott has been saying. An unsafe, uh, uh, how do you say that? An unsafe um, job environments. And not only Working that, conditions, but yes. they're going back to, to jobs that don't pay a whole lot. Um, in the case of Chipotle here in New York, um, they're paying $11, even though it's supposed to be $15 minimum wage here in New York City. And so, you know, Bill de Blasio said, we're going to see you in court. You know, now that these restaurants and everything are opening back up to full capacity, some of them are saying, you know what, we're still uh, suffering. And these are big, large corporations, not small businesses, uh, saying we're still suffering. So we're not going to pay people that we're taking back uh, uh, the full uh, minimum wage that they deserve. I need another the thing I this thing. week. Scott, you wanted to make another comment about this? Yeah, yeah uh, just quickly. I think the underlying thing is, is a fight about um, the, the degree to which um, capital will be able to kind of use coercive power on workers, right? The government um, gave people a little bit of breathing room, um, which means taking away some of the power that the capitalist class has to coerce people, to compel them to work. Um, and uh, they don't like that at all, um, which is what they're really fighting for. The, the, the ability, the right to um, use economic um, and sometimes other forms of coercion as well to, to get people back to work. This is a basic factor in the class struggle, in other words. <laughs> Anita, uh, I was, uh, we talked a little bit, of, actually quite a bit of last week about Liz Cheney and the vote came down yeah. this week and she got booted out of the Republican third position in the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, quite a hero now uh, for some people. Um, what do you think? I, I, I hope she runs for president in 2024 as an independent. Um, I think that would be uh, really good for the country. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, Liz Cheney, um, and we, we, we were trying to decide is she our ally uh, or, uh, and I think I have to agree again with Michael that we have to ask her that question, whether she's with the Communist Party, but um, she's... Um, is that the question, though? Is she is with what, the Communist Party? I mean, <laughs> is, well, she's, uh, it was interesting. It really showed you where uh, the Republican Party is. They're, they're standing behind their man, the one who lost the uh, popular vote two elections in a row, and then uh, lost his party, the, the House and the Senate. So uh, they're all behind him 100%, uh, and they're not going to uh, tolerate any uh, dissension in their ranks. So it's it's interesting. They ended up, they're going to end up with a, a more moderate uh, Ellen Stepanek in, in that role instead of uh, uh, the ultra conservative Liz Cheney. Scott, let me ask you a question. Was Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin allies in the fight against Hitler? They fought, they, they fought jointly, yes. All right, so is Liz uh, but I think, I mean, ally in the, is the All People's Front, is she part of it? Ally, it depends on what, you know, what material contribution someone is making 
to this struggle. Like it wasn't Winston Churchill personally. It was it was um, Great Britain. Okay, uh, that Bill was Cheney they, organized several former secretaries of defense to write a letter paying, calling attention to the danger that Trump presented three days before the January 6th insurrection. Is that again, material I, enough I, for you? As I, as, I said, as I said last week, I don't waste my time worrying about whether Liz Cheney is my ally or not. <laughs> Boy, Fred Astaire ain't got nothing on you when it comes to dancing <laughs> around a question. Uh, Alvin Ailey, you put him to shame. <laughs> oh my goodness, Debbie, what's the, what's the name of the sister? Uh, Michael, the black woman, the Debbie, uh, the dancer, I can't think Debbie of Debbie Allen. Name. Debbie Allen, ain't you? Y'all ain't, uh, <laughs> Michael, uh, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I think objectively, we want to build the broadest possible, because fascism is not conservatism, it's a leap. It's genocide, it's war, it's racism, it's mass murder. I mean, you know, that's what we're threatened with, with these forces who are, it's, 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 it's jail and torture and, and um, that's, that's the danger that we're up against, isn't it, Michael? Well, I have to agree that, um... You know, on this issue, you could say that uh, Liz Cheney is playing a role in, in the people's front, you know, because it's kind of a loose coalition. It's not that everyone sat down and signed a paper in agreement, kind of like Stalin and FDR and Churchill did. And so, yeah, you know, that could be appreciated and applauded. Um, we can even note how the Libertarian Party in, in the last elections kind of divided the conservative right wing vote in many states, you know, and got millions and millions of votes. And so uh, that's significant too in itself. And so I understand Anita's uh, recommendation that she run as an independent to divide the right wing vote in the next election. Um, and so, but in terms of her being an ally in the fight, I think, again, that's kind of a more um, formalistic term, you know, not that it's worth a, a war over words, but on this issue in terms of a, an all people's friend against fascism, anyone who's not a fascist, yeah, I think she's a part of that. And I think anyone else, you know, who may identify as conservative or religious and, you know, uh, but on this issue, who disagree with Trump, they would be a part of that front as well. Joe, I think that, yeah, makes, well, that makes Liz Cheney an anti Antifa uh, instead of a fa. So yeah. uh, I guess that shows you the lowest, the low, the lowness of the bar for being Antifa, actually. So. Which means Trump thinks she should be locked up in prison for being a criminal. As a yeah. terrorist. <laughs> there is war in the streets of Palestine on the West Bank, Gaza, excuse me. And um, children are being killed, Scott. And, uh, and, it's, and, it's, and the issue, uh, and I, I hear that they're sending in ground troops now. And, and, and the issue is the settlement, isn't it? The, taking people's homes. Well, the, the, yeah, the issue is, um, you know, continuing the, the occupation and the program of, of illegal uh, settlements, um, forcing people from their homes in, in East Jerusalem, um, uh, which is supposed to be the capital of a, of a Palestinian state. Uh, and, and then in, in Gaza, you know, the, the pretext is, is, you know Hamas and and its its store of rockets, but it's become very clear that um, total they, they've been talking in terms of total pacification. You know we will not stop until total quiet reigns. And um, there this is this is genocide. This is it's it's ethnic cleansing. Uh, it's it's completely beyond the pale of anything that is compatible with democracy with human rights. Um, and the United States is stalling and, and dragging its heels on condemning it. Um, you know, Biden has uh, sent a, a delegation, mediators, uh, to um, sit the two sides down. The UN Security Council wanted to um, uh, take the issue up, but the United States blocked it. Um, you know, every Security Council member has that veto power. Uh, 
Um, and Biden said, no, 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 just give them more time. Uh, so this is this, you know, we're still actively aiding in this horrific process of um, this, this criminal occupation of Palestine. I thought it was a big demonstration in Chicago yesterday, Scott. Uh, 10,000, 10, tens of thousands, according to one thing I saw. Uh, and there needs to be demonstrations all over the country. And uh, Michael, your president needs to take a stand on it, you know, um, and uh, we need to put, bring maximum pressure to bear to, to, to end this. And, and the peace process has to be restarted, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. I was just, um, I'm a little bit concerned. I've, I've, you know, I follow social media very closely and you see a lot of uh, sections of young people and um, you know, young quote unquote radical leftists falling into the kind of uh, I guess pitfalls you can say of uh, you know trying to determine whether a one state solution in the immediate sense versus a two state solution you know is is up to, to them to decide. And I remember back to uh, Yasser Arafat and how you know his uh, he kind of had like a Gramsci Marxist approach to you know a long. Uh, drawn out fight for position and survival and he knew what needed to be done uh, for his people you know as early as the 60s 70s and so forth and so you look back to that and you say yes we have to get back to that it can't just be um, you know a, a, this frontal assault that a lot of people are calling for um, because it's not what's best for Palestinian people obviously we're seeing that right now uh, and which is uh, playing out in Gaza. And so, you know, our, our support has to be, again, for the peace process, backing the PLO and our, you know, our fraternal parties that play a role in, in the PLO in a coalition with Fatah and uh, carrying on the legacy of Yasser Arafat, which was that of peace. And, and ultimately, uh, what does the Communist Party of Israel say? Uh, as long as there is occupation, there will be resistance. I think that's what we, we have to remember. And a Tuesday solution. Well, that does it for us today. We'll be back next week with another edition of Good Morning Revolution. We want to wish everybody uh, a good week. Stay strong. Stay safe. Wear your mask um, if you have to, need to. And uh, if you don't and you're out in the public space, uh, you can make your own choices about that. Following the science. Take care. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.